The Indian Prime Minister says dialogue is the only way to resolve the Kashmir crisis as renewed violence hits the region. But is India prepared to take on the Kashmir issue? And what are the strategic risks in this highly volatile area? This is Inside Story. Hello, I'm Nick Clark. Welcome to the programme. Yes, dialogue and discussion, the only road to peace in Kashmir, so says the Indian Prime Minister Manmohan Singh. This comes as the Indian Parliament considers easing the harsh security laws in Kashmir after months of increasingly violent protests. As tensions build on the streets, Divya Gopalan has this report on the decision makers meeting in Delhi. The anger on the streets fueling the urgency for a solution to the unrest in Kashmir. Live ammunition no longer enough to quiet the frustrations of the Kashmiris. The Indian central government has time and time again put the issue on the back burner. But now, as pictures of violent demonstrations and clashes are broadcast around the world, a realization that any delay could ignite more flames of fury. So an urgent meeting at the Prime Minister's residence in Delhi involving all top political parties in India and Kashmir. I was shocked and distressed to see young men and women, even children, joining the protests on the streets. But the shock of these pictures, not enough so far to force a solution. Instead, a call for more dialogue and discussion. We have to talk to each other. And those who have grievances against the government <coughs> had to talk to the administration. But it is also true that meaningful dialogue can happen only in an atmosphere free from violence and confrontation. Analysts say it's a proposal tantamount to admitting that the government has little clue on how to deal with the situation. Here's a crisis, the building is on fire. So you don't call a committee meeting to say now what should we do? You put out the fire. As security forces are roaming the streets of Jammu and Kashmir and forcing the first 24-hour curfew in more than a decade, talk in Delhi is touching on the controversial Armed Forces Special Powers Act. Administration in Kashmir has been calling for the emergency law that gives the army sweeping powers to be lifted as a concession to the Kashmiri people. Seen as a violation of human rights, it allows security forces to shoot on mere suspicion, arrest without a warrant and destroy property without fear of any legal retribution. In the past, curfews have been imposed whenever there is a hint of unrest, but this time Kashmiris are calling it collective punishment. There are reports of essentials like medicine, bread, milk and vegetables running out. Air traffic has been completely suspended and roads in and out of the territory have been blocked, putting a population that's been clamoring for equality further into isolation. Divya Gopalan, Al Jazeera, New Delhi. Well, joining our discussion today are our guests. In New Delhi, we have Radha Kumar, a trustee at the Delhi Policy Group, and also in New Delhi, author of Kashmir 1947, The Origins of a Dispute, Prem Shankar Jha. And in London, Rahul Roy Chowdhury, Senior Fellow for South Asia at the International Institute for Strategic Studies. Welcome to all of you to the program. Uh, Radha Kumar, if I could start with you first of all. Uh, we've seen violence before uh, in a big way in Kashmir at a much worse level than this right now. So how do you quantify how dangerous this current phase of trouble is? I think it's really very dangerous indeed. We see um, a wider spread of violence. It has penetrated more areas. But the real problem is not so much the violence, as you point out, uh, but the um, anarchy that appears to have spread over the state. There's also a sense of pent-up anger at long frustrated political aspirations, uh, which is being expressed and which would need a speedy response, which is not yet forthcoming. OK, Rahul Roy Chowdhury, it seems to be no question that this is a, this is a protest of the people rather than a, an armed uh, militant force. You'd think it'd be easy to deal with. Uh, n not necessarily. I mean, I think uh, 
uh, what we're seeing really is something which is quite uh, different from what we've really seen in the past. Uh, the people demonstrating are not militants, they're Indian citizens. Uh, uh, they are not using uh, armed uh, force in that sense or weapons of any significance. Uh, uh, they're using uh, sticks and stones. Uh, and the link uh, with extremists uh, in Pakistan uh, is limited in terms of the demonstrations uh, uh, that we've seen so far. So I think the key issue really is, is, is the concern over these demonstrations uh, where excessive force has been used. And the concern is the ability of the, uh, of the security forces to deal effectively with these protesters to move from what the security forces have been focusing on in the past, which is counterinsurgency, to issues like crowd control, uh, to ensure that demonstrations don't get out of hand. That mindset has to change. And, that, and, and as a result of an inability to shift to that mindset, we are looking at the large and growing number of casualties. Interesting, isn't it? Yeah, yes, uh, Prem Shankar Jari, the fact that it's Indian citizens that we're talking about here and not a militant force as such, in a sense, makes it all the more threatening for the government, doesn't it? Well, the real threat is one that comes from the way the Kashmiris are feeling. See, the, the central issue here is justice and injustice. These are unarmed people. Uh, they were protesting for a long time. They were throwing stones, admittedly. But the stone pelters, there are many ways of dealing with them. They have been dealt with with bullets. And young people have died, and often people who have not had anything to do, even with the stone pelting. And instead of immediate change in tactics and methods of dealing with this, some kind of uh, apology, some kind of restitution, uh, th there has been indifference. And in fact, there's been. Uh, Okay, so, so let me let me just jump in there. Where, where, before we get into the sort of the whys and wherefores of how it can be dealt with, where do you think it, it could lead if the status quo is maintained, if nothing is done? Uh, you know, if you were to describe the situation to an outsider, how would you describe how, how dangerous it is and where it could lead? My own sense from all the, 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 the many telephone calls I get from Kashmir and the things I've been watching on television uh, and is that we are rapidly ex approaching an explosion point. There's a, th this thing is not, you know, uh, unrest does not rise linearly. It, ri it, it can rise exponentially. And we're coming to the exponential point. And frankly, at that point, it is very, very difficult to tell how you will control this. You see, for example, if just now they were to uh, finish with the curfew and say, look, look, out, uh, you can pr do your processions, do whatever you like, just mind it, keep it peaceful. It might work, and I think okay. it probably would work. There would be some episodes that it wouldn't work. But you wait a little longer, and it will be seen as a sign of weakness by the central, by the central okay, government. Okay, let, let me bring in government. Let and me bring in Radha Kumar again. Let, let me just jump in there, bring in Radha yes. Kumar again. I just need to sort of share this about this discussion. Um, when you talk of, uh, or the phrase explosion point is talked about, that always uh, sends shivers down the spine, especially given the, the nuclear capabilities of uh, the countries involved here, India and Pakistan. Yes, indeed. Uh, it does send shivers down the spine. I think that with uh, Kashmir and indeed with many things in India, we reach explosion points, we step away from them, we reach them again. And uh, I would agree with Prem that we've come to a point where it's now. We have to act now. Uh, I would say, though, that there are opportunities. We. Um, the question of uh, uh, reaching out or of uh, talking to the youth in Kashmir has to go through the path of talking to the dissident groups like the Hurriyat uh, Mirwais and the Hurriyat Gilani. And the sooner that dialogue is started, the better. Now, the question is, how do you begin that dialogue in a situation of ongoing violence? The dissident groups have said, we need confidence building measures release of some of those arrested is a major confidence building measure as Prem has pointed out curfew lifting the curfew is a major measure and saying that you're ready to start to talk on some of the points that have been outlined but, but to actually um, bring all those in all those points in as preconditions for talks that, that's an awful lot to to expect isn't it I think that uh, uh, what needs to be made clear is that these are not being taken as preconditions but as dialogue points for action Okay, well, there in that case, let me put that to you. Absolutely. Rahul Roy Chowdhury, uh, you want to come in there? 
Uh, yes, I mean, I, a slight difference uh, of perspective from the other two speakers, I think. Uh, the first is that uh, this has clearly uh, the propensity to escalate. Uh, we've seen uh, in the last uh, three months uh, the casualty uh, figures rise to over 100. Uh, are we at an explosion point or not? I don't think we're at an explosion point uh, as yet. Uh, I think that, uh, uh, th that, that we need to avert any movement uh, towards such a point. But there is an opportunity now, and I think but the opportunity really rests... But hold a second, really I mean, there's a pretty much constant state of tension on the streets. Angry crowds seem to take to the streets for any reason. Uh, yes, that's right. But it's not, it's not that Kashmir hasn't seen this before. Uh, remember, uh, about two years ago, you had the largest demonstrations ever since 1989 over to the Amarnath Yatra issue and the U-turn to the government and the concerns there. Uh, you've had demonstrations, uh, 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 you know, in the last three months which have been, uh, which have been of concern. But the question is, have we reached an explosion point or not? And I think that's mm -hmm. where I would disagree. Having said that, uh, my sense is that uh, there needs to be implementation of decisions that have already been taken by the central government. Uh, there have been various round tables uh, which have been held over the last few years on various issues, including economic aid to Kashmir, uh, the, uh, greater autonomy, etc. Uh, these are the sort of uh, issues that need to be taken uh, straight away, need to be implemented. But what we're it, not but seeing is it, really... Is it, with respect, it's easy to say those words, isn't it? But the government seems to be incapable of providing any leadership. Uh, the Prime Minister himself has said that he's groping uh, for solutions? Well, I think uh, that we have seen, unfortunately, uh, a sort of paralysis uh, in, the, in both the state and the central government in New Delhi for various reasons. Uh, but I think uh, what the Prime Minister said earlier today and his sentiments and what he had said on the 15th of August at uh, the Independence Day uh, uh, speech uh, is very clear that the priority needs to be again on Kashmir on ensuring uh, that there is a better governance, that uh, uh, there are better opportunities for the youth and to ensure that the demonstrations that we've seen which are not only anti-government protests but also are protests uh, in terms of allegations of the burning of the Quran in the US uh, etc. Uh, are, are managed effectively. Uh, the, the management has to be key. It should not be with the use of live bullets by security forces, but it needs far greater crowd control, far greater intelligence to prevent these demonstrations. So in a way, uh, the tactics uh, need to be changed, the mindset needs to be changed, and overall, clearly, there needs to be implementation of, of, of several of the recommendations that have been made in the past. Uh, Prem Chakajar, I can see you shaking I, your yes, head vehemently. There. I, 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 mm. May I just say that we are talking in extreme generalities when a situation is absolutely very concrete at the moment. Uh, take, for example, the burning of the Quran. The man who was arrested this morning for having led the attack on the missionary school is a member of the National Conference, which is the same party which is in, in power today and is imposing the curfew. How do you explain that? I can explain that, but I haven't got the time to do it just now. Okay, okay. But you can uh, work it out for yourself. Before, absolutely. Before no, we get moment, into all this, let, let, let's, try, let's approach the, the no, issue no, no, of solutions. No, 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 you're not letting me speak. Will no, you please it, let me speak? I, I will. I'll come back to you just in a second. I just want to say this, if you will, Prem. Um, to give it some sort of context, since gaining independence from Britain in 1947, three wars have been fought over the region. Clashes between separatists and the Indian forces have claimed tens of thousands of lives. While some fingers point at Pakistan, others say it's the Indian government's fault, as we've been discussing. Now, it is a politically charged issue in India, with leaders deeply divided on how to tackle it. Kashmiri politicians, hoping to regain some credibility with their people, want the military law to end in the region, but the opposition and some members of the parliament oppose even a partial lifting of the law. They say this would lead to more violence. So, Prem Shankarjar, it's a very big issue, this, isn't it? This issue of the Armed Forces Special Powers Act. Harsh emergency laws, some would say. They've been in place for the last 20 years. More people have died this year at the hands of the security forces. The act, quite simply, has got to go, isn't it? I've got, I'm laughing because not the Armed Forces Special Powers Act applies to the Indian Army. And not one single Indian Army person is involved in what is going on today. This is the Kashmir police backed at its request by the Central Reserve Police Force. This is a state government action 
the Indian Army is not under the state government, it's under the center. The Armed Forces Special Powers Act being demand, refo, re, removal being demanded is the, uh, actually being demanded because people don't understand the difference. It is a purely symbolic act and when the state government asks for it, they, they know that it is symbolic. And may I say that Pakistan is not involved in this except to the extent that th there are always elements who fish in troubled waters. There is no, no evidence that I have had either from the people who have been talk talking to me and they have been talking in large numbers from Kashmir that there is a di in fact many of them have been at uh, criticizing Pakistan saying that we want, not we want nothing to do with these people. They have not helped us in the okay. past. This is our struggle. Okay, Radha Kumar, just getting back this to this uh, Armed Forces Special Powers Act. Uh, the Special Powers Act. Some are, uh, the opposition members are saying that um, the even partial lifting of the law will lead to more violence. What's your position on this? I think it's a great shame that it uh, that the whole Disturbed Areas Act application, which brings the Armed Forces Special Powers Act into play, was not revisited and lifted um, two or three years earlier when there was relative calm. And what we see is actually a result of the failure to revisit uh, draconian provisions of the 1990s. And now, of course, it is a little awkward in a situation of ongoing violence to suddenly say, well, this place is not disturbed anymore. But the Prem is right that it hasn't been an operation on the ground. While the law remains, uh, it's not actually being acted upon. Uh, but there's a deeper question, you know, the question of impunity. This act is only one element that offers impunity. There are many others. And there's also the problem that the inquiry commission reports have not been implemented. Things are not done in a transparent and public enough way. And there is a denial of justice. Uh, no doubt about that. There's also further question of security redeployments. How do you show to people that actually you've moved large numbers of security forces out and will move more. These are assurances that need to be given. Okay, Rahul Roy Chowdhury, very good itemization of the challenges facing the government and those that seek to uh, resolve this issue. Uh, but how do you take it on? How do you find those solutions? Uh, it, it's not easy. I mean, uh, clearly, uh, you know, Kashmir uh, has been... Uh, uh, has, has, has been, ha you know, uh, in a state of, of, of tension for the last uh, three months. Uh, uh, there's been a period of peace earlier, but that hasn't uh, clearly worked, as we've seen. I think uh, there are two, two uh, issues here. Uh, the first is uh, there needs to be clearly uh, a greater uh, sort of uh, sense of, of political will uh, from both Delhi and uh, uh, Srinagar uh, to resolve uh, the, the issues at hand, to calm the, the protesters, uh, uh, to ensure that uh, the demonstrations are managed, that excessive force is not used by the security forces. So I think that is really, you know, the immediate one. Uh, it, and, and I think in the short term, clearly, there is a sense that uh, Delhi needs and Srinagar needs to show uh, that, uh, uh, that the concerns of Kashmir are being met, uh, uh, that uh, there are economic uh, initiatives underway, that there is a political uh, sort of uh, greater political sense uh, in terms of the future of, of Kashmir. And I think, uh, thirdly, I, I, the uh, a dialogue uh, between India and Pakistan that has been stalled uh, uh, resumes at, 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 at key uh, levels. Uh, uh, where uh, in the uh, composite dialogue in the past, Kashmir was very much part of the discussion. Uh, Kashmir should again uh, very much be a part of the discussion in the next series of, of, of dialogues between India and Pakistan. So in a way, I think these would be the three key elements. But the bottom line is that the government in Delhi uh, needs to be seen uh, to be focusing and delivering on Kashmir, and today we don't see that. We don't have a sense okay. that that is the case. Isn't the problem, Prem, that uh, you know, we're not even mentioning the elephant in the room here, and the bottom line is that many uh, in Indian-administered Kashmir, especially in the, uh, the Muslim-majority Kashmir Valley, uh, would prefer not to be part of India? Um, I, we don't have any figures on this. Yesterday I had a, 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 a so-called separatist leader who came to me, who, who was in my house and said, not one Kashmiri really wants to secede from India. You can believe him or not believe him. Others will tell you a large number want to go. The issue is not that. The issue today is that there is a government which the Kashmiris want out 
that government is the National Conference government and they want it out because there have been nearly 100 people, unarmed people more or less, killed by police bullets and nothing has been done about it. There's a question of constitutional responsibility. Government has broken down. Under this curfew, schools have closed. People can't attend. Their, they've lost one year because they can't go to the examinations. 200 children were, were brought down to Delhi to sit their exams because their parents could afford it. There is no bread. There is no food. Medicines have run short. People can't get to ho hospitals. This is break down of government under the Indian constitution and action should have been taken a long time ago. The Kashmiris are asking for this. I've been told this over and over again that if you dismiss this government, if you bring in governor's rule and then 90% of the problem will be over. That will only be the beginning of the problem being over but then it will at least open the way for you to say okay now we will not have any more curfew and no, uh, you know and please therefore demonstrate peacefully, do whatever you like, but maintain the peace. But so long as the government that has killed 90, peop 90 people is there, uh, nothing is going to move. This, this anger is going to okay, keep let me bring in Radha Kumar. Three more people have died today, Nick. You must remember that. I know, Three absolutely. More have died this absolutely. Let, let me bring in Radha Kumar. We're coming towards the end of the program. Do you find, have any optimism about the fact that this can be resolved, given that so many uh, consecutive governments have failed to deal with this? I, uh, well... I'm eternally optimist and, uh, you know, I campaign for this to be resolved. Uh, so despite failures, we have to keep trying. I do believe we have a great opportunity now. I think many feelers have been put out by almost every stakeholder for a political process to take the upper hand. Um, how to make it happen? That is a million dollar question. I don't think I can answer it. But I would say that we need to see a little more, um, and, well, obviously the state government needs to pull itself together. Obviously, New Delhi needs to respond in a better way and, and in a more timely fashion with bolder steps. But we also need to see the Hurriyats uh, responding more boldly. They have allowed the street to take the upper hand and that's not helpful for them or for any political process to emerge either. Okay, let me just give the last word to Rahul. We've got uh, approximately 45 seconds left. Uh, do you see a great opportunity here? I think there is an opportunity, and I think the Prime Minister of India needs to take it. Uh, uh, he needs to travel to Kashmir. Uh, he needs to take senior members of his cabinet along with him. Uh, he needs to talk to the people of Kashmir. Uh, there is a tremendous amount of respect for the Indian Prime Minister, Manmohan Singh, and I think he needs to be in Kashmir uh, to, to ensure uh, that uh, there, there is a healing touch provided by the central government in Kashmir. I don't advocate uh, regime change of any sense uh, uh, in, in, in the state government. It is clearly up to the Prime Minister now uh, to go to Kashmir and talk to his people. There we go. Diverse views on a very difficult problem. Uh, thank you very much indeed uh, for joining us. Uh, thanks to our guests, Prem Shankarja, Radha Kumar and Rahul Roy Chowdhury. Thanks a lot. And thanks for watching this edition of Inside Story. Do send us your comments and suggestions. Just email them to us at insidestory at aljazeera.net. From me, Nick Clark, it's goodbye.